Hello, this is David Arnold. In this video, we'll look at how a large lumen print is prepared as a digital file for preservation and printing. Lumen printing is one of the most direct means to engage the core of photography. With lumen printing, sunlight is used to expose and to develop an image. Left unfixed, the lumen print image will vanish. Photographing or scanning the lumen print on a flatbed scanner shortly after exposure are the only ways to preserve the lumen image. I find this integration of ancient and contemporary image making to be one of the most fascinating aspects of lumen print making. Let's take a look at the steps I use to prepare a lumen print as a digital file. I have a very good scanner, an Epson V750. However, the maximum size for scanning any artwork is 8.5 by 11 inches. To scan larger works of art, such as paintings and other large prints, it's necessary to scan them in segments. You can see six different segments of a 16 by 20 lumen print here before us, and I have them open in Adobe Bridge, and I'm going to be merging them into one document and Adobe Bridge and Camera Raw have a very good feature for doing that. So I select all of them and then I click on the Load Camera Raw and here we're in Camera Raw. So I select all, so Command A or Control A and down here in the corner there's a little three dots and you click in here and I go to Merge to Panorama and that will combine these six uh, scans into one file and it doesn't take too long and there we have it. So it did a very good job and it's provided uh, an, an a automatic adjustment to it. So I go ahead and merge it and it's saved as a DNG file and there it is. So uh, I can make some adjustments here like I'm going to bring the highlights down and I'm going to bring the uh, clarity up, texture up, and then I'm going to open it into Photoshop or I'll do some retouching of this lumen print. We have our lumen print open now in Photoshop. And my first step will be to rotate the image to a vertical configuration. So I go to Image Rotation Counterclockwise 90, and there it is. And my next step will be to duplicate the layer here. It has all the original information. I highly recommend doing this every time that you do any retouching. Always do it on a duplicate layer to preserve the original information below it in case you need it. So let's blow this up and take a look at it. And you can see as we scroll around it that there's lots of little dust specks here. So we're going to get rid of those with a uh, dust and scratches action. Otherwise, it looks pretty good. There's just a few little things maybe to take care of. Um, I can use the spot healing to eliminate some of these little distractions over here. But this one looks pretty good to start with. There's not too much that needs to be taken care of. Maybe some of these larger ones. But I'm not going to take up too much time clicking around the image, but you can see it's um, really interesting effects with the lumen print the, the, with the uh, petals and the grass heads and the colors that are generated on black and white paper from the moisture and from the um, light and from the chemicals that are present in the organic material. It's really remarkable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fit to screen and I'm going to um, Go ahead and duplicate the retouch layer and I'm going to apply a dust and scratches action to it. So I go to filter, noise, dust and scratches 
and it brings up this dialog box and set to zero. You can see the little white dots that are in there, all the little problems that are just be impossible to retouch out. So test it out, pull up the radius till they start to disappear and then bring up the threshold which will give it a little more texture to the image. And that looks pretty good. Okay, so hit OK. Now let's apply this filter to the entire image. And what it's going to do also, it's going to get rid of, you can see the all the dust spots, but it's also knocked down some of the spectacular detail in the grass seeds and also in the blossom. So we're going to bring those back by, and they're just below us here in this layer below. So we're going to bring them back into the image using a layer mask. So I'm going to fit to screen again. And I'm going to select the petals and the stems and the grass seeds. So I'm going to use the object selection tool and it's set to object finder. And this is a new feature in Photoshop 2022. So I'm going to go ahead and select around it like so and very easily it will find those objects and select them. There it is. So it did a really good job, you can see, getting all of those important information in the file. So what I'm going to do is click on the dust and I'm going to click on this button down here and that's going to load a layer mask like so. Now the, with a layer mask you can see that it's where there's black it will reveal the layer below. So um, what I want though is the opposite of this. I want the detail and this is going to keep the detail in the in the background. I want the detail in the poppy petals and in the grass seeds. So I'm going to flip that by doing an inver inverting the, this, this uh, layer mask. So doing a command I inverts it like so. And you can see the edges of it. Let me turn it back so you can see the viewpoint there. So you can see that it's brought back the detail in the petals. That's the object selection. The object finder is working there. So I'm going to turn that off. There we go. But you can see the really incredible detail that's there. And I've knocked out all that uh, dust and scratches that were so distracting before. I'm going to go ahead and apply a slight blur to this selection here. So I'm going to go ahead and let me hold on my option key so you can see what it's going to do. So I go up here to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and you can see how it's blurring the edges a bit. I want to just give it a kind of feather out a little bit. So there's not a sharp edge along the background there. And hit OK. And then I'm going to go back and you can see what it looks like. So it looks really good. So I'm going to make an, another duplicate layer. So I'm going to hold down my Option key and go to these little submenu flyout, Merge Visible. And that creates another layer, brings everything that I've been all the steps I've been doing here into this one layer, and this is going to be my uh, retouch two. This will be the final retouch layer. So I can I'm going to look. There's some little bits in in the spot healing. Some little bits of dust in here. And I want to get rid of. So I'm just going to scroll around a little bit. And it looks pretty good overall. So there we have it. So this is ready to print uh, now. I would make a duplicate. I'll make a duplicate file to print. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. File Save As. And this will be my layered version.
save it. And I'm going to duplicate this. And I'm going to flatten it. Flatten image. And I'm going to save it. It's going to be the poppy one. Flat. And this will be my master file that I can print from or make duplicates of to put on social media accounts or to uh, put on my websites. I could make copies from this particular layer. So that you know, the steps that I take to digitize Lumen prints. Lumen prints are going to they can't be ex they can't be exposed to sunlight again because the light it will the colors will fade. So this is the uh, only way to preserve the really fabulous colors and details in lumen prints. I can fix these images, but the colors will will dramatically shift. It creates an interesting fixed print but it's not the same as having this brilliant orange and, uh, and uh, that we see in the, the really deep browns that we see in this and the purples and magentas that come through from the, from the photographic paper. That would, all, that would all disappear. So um, I hope you appreciated and enjoyed this look at retouching a lumen print. Thank you so much.